Hi, my name is Tim Brown and I'm a web designer here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I want to talk to you today about how to code your first navigation system on a website with HTML and CSS. Um, I'm just going to go through the basics and I hope it's easy enough for you to follow along and we'll kind of talk through some of the things as I do it. All right, let's go. So, a couple of the keys here. You know, we're looking at this page that we built through the previous videos. It's fairly simple, um, but a common element on a lot of websites, a lot of websites, is that top header. We've got a couple key components. Um, let's look at the HTML that we've been working through. So here's all that stuff, my amazing web page, so on and so forth. But we need that header. We need somewhere where people can navigate from page to page and be able to get around essentially. So we're gonna kind of show you what that might be. So first thing we need to do is create a header tag. That's a, that less than sign, the word header, and then the greater than sign. And then on the other side, let's start by putting on the other side of this first image. We'll pretend that this, this placeholder image is the logo. Less than sign slash header greater than sign and the next tag just for kind of clean markup here would I'm, I'm tabbing things out as I go um, will be the nav tag just means navigation right so less than sign word nav greater than sign and then on the other side of the image the less than sign slash nav greater than sign so as you're following along here, um, just maybe try this, maybe just watch the first time and then come back through it. And obviously we've got the image. We can put a class on that if we want. Um, you learned how to put in classes in previous videos, class equals quotations, closing quotation, and let's say logo. Or you could even do ID here as well, which would be you only have one one of those per page but it really doesn't matter ID or um, class we'll just do class because we've already talked through classes all right so the next thing is going to be those items and because the navigation items are a list um, we're gonna call it an unnested list which is a UL so less than sign UL greater than sign. I'm going to press enter, go to the next line and do a close tag for that. And then the individual items themselves are going to be li. So less than sign, li, greater than sign, so on and so forth. Closing tag. And then within those list items, we have the a tag. So the a tag a href equals I'm gonna create that and let's just say it's a I'm gonna use a pound sign to do as a placeholder for now as a good way to if you're linking somewhere but you, you don't have the link yet good way to do that is just to do pound sign and then less uh, less than sign slash a greater than sign and then let's what would this be uh, a page that let's pretend um, this is the about page. I can just copy this and do it again and then replace the about with work. And then let's copy it and paste it. And let's say this one is contact. It's all about work and contact. Now we have this unnested list, each of these list items with a link inside them. Um, and they're inside the nav bar. So let's, this is going to be really unstyled if I, if I save this, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm just going to reload the page. You can see, obviously, uh, it's not beautiful here and, uh, maybe it won't be beautiful by the end of this, but we'll, at least we'll have the main components down for what this would look like. All right. So we take the nav bar, um, and let's go to our style page. Um, like we set this up in the last one, we're linking out to it here. Remember, we're going to style.css and let's get our styles in here. We've got 
the nav, which is gonna be important. And we're gonna do padding 20 picks. So padding, once again, is on the interior of the item. It's the, the padding within that element. And we're gonna display block so that it clears both of the things up, um, up and down, both top and bottom of it. And uh, we're gonna make it the background color white. Um, oh, excuse me, background color, dash color, colon white. You can also use a hexadecimal color there. We've got clear both. We're making sure that it's not um, interfering with the items below and above it. And then we're gonna make the height of that 60 pixels. And then I'm gonna do nav image. So NAV and then space IMG opening bracket. You know, you get, you'll get used to that, but it's shift and then the uh, bracket button on your keyboard and nav image float so this is that logo element and we can use the we can do image or we could actually use the class here class logo so maybe just for demonstration purposes I'm gonna make it in IMG dot L O G O and anytime that you use this I you use two elements together or two identifiers together IMG dot logo you're gonna make it essentially more likely to take your class over any other class so it's a nice way to kind of get more specific with the classes that you're choosing and that doesn't matter so much now because we don't have that much style written but for instance if you were writing styles in let's say wordpress or something like that you sometimes are competing with either like the an, you know another style sheet or something like that so you want to make them specific when appropriate and in this way this is a way to make it more specific we're saying the image and the, with the class of logo within the nav bar so there's no space between image and logo because they're on the same they're on the same level they're on the same element and no space but there is a space between nav and image because nav is the parent element Let's move on. All right, so we've got a float left. Semicolon to split up the styles. We've got a max width of 150 picks. So obviously you can kind of see the styles that I'm writing. I'm not necessarily sure I've done max width yet. Oh yeah, we have done max width on the container. Um, okay, and then nav. The UL element, the unnested list itself, we want to float that right. And then the nav UL LI, so the list item. So we're saying the nav, the unnested list, and then the list item. We want to display inline block. and we're gonna position it relative to the other elements. Position, colon, relative, and then the padding, we're gonna do 15 picks just to give it some space around each item. Now, now that I've done that, let's take a look at what that looks like here. So you can see we made the, the nav bar up here a certain amount of pixels so I'm gonna right click and inspect elements so you can kind of see this in play we've got the nav element and we made it 60 pixels high so that kind of contains it up here it's a nice way to kind of give it some parameters and make sure it's not going too big and then the list item is kind of the complicated part here we're floating it to the right but then the list items have some padding around them so they're kind of spaced out. What else would I do here if I'm in a real situation? Um, I'm probably gonna remove that underline. So how do you remove that underline? Let's just test it here. We have, if we make a style here, we have to copy and paste it back to the style sheet. But how would I make it without an underline? That would be text decoration is the identifier. 
and then it's none. Actually, we're gonna have to make that more specific, excuse me. We're gonna have to say, um, so I'm actually, I'm copying that, and I'm actually gonna make it on the A element, because like I said, sometimes making it more specific is more important, or is it very important, so nav ul l i a. And then I'm gonna do an opening bracket, close bracket, I'm gonna paste that in there. I'm gonna command S to save, and then let's go back to our, so now we have a, a basic but functional, well, it will once we link to the different pages, um, navigation up here. One more thing I wanna do. Let's just show you an example of linking to a page. So obviously we need to have a page there and we'll, we will create one, but we would go in here if we're linking one, obviously AH ref, Maybe not obviously, sorry. Um, and then slash, and we'd add the, let's say about.html here. So that that links to that about page. And then we'd go to our file structure, we'd make sure that there's uh, a about page in there. So let's say we duplicate index for the time being, just as an example, and turn that into the about page. Let's open that up real quick and just change something on it so that we can make sure that worked, right? So, now that we've created that about page, we can go back to the navigation on the home page, and I'm gonna do, since it's in the same file, I'm just gonna say about.html. And so that should reference that about file. And if we go back to our home page, and press about. And we're good to go. So, after you have the about work in context working here, what is one more common thing? Um, this is a lot for one video, but one more common thing that you might do is let's say call out that contact page a little bit. It's always important to kind of identify the next step for for people on websites. So let's say we want to add a little button kind of shape around contact. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna identify, either I'm gonna identify it in the list or I'm gonna call it out in the, in a selector, which you can call out the last item in a list with the selector, which is a really nice way to grab that one. So nav ul li, and what we'll do here is we'll say colon last dash child and then the A and then we'll open and close brackets and we'll say, what do, how do I wanna do this? Let's go with uh, background for the moment. I'm just gonna use really basic colors. Background blue, color white and then Let's, we, let's say we want to make the the edges kind of rounded. So here's a new way, uh, new style here. Border radius four pixels. So that means it's going to curve in four pixels on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and Command S, and we will refresh. So now we've got that little thing around it. I I need some padding to make it stylish. So let's had that element with 10 pixels first on the top and bottom. Remember if you're doing a style and you only add two numbers like 10 picks and 20 picks, then it's going to be the top and bottom for the first number and the left and right for the second number. Command S and we have a button. So that's nice. And I can't stop myself. One last thing. Um, we want to have a hover for that, right? We want it to look nice on hover because it's good for usability because we know that that's a button and that's a good thing. So all the same stuff, I'm copying and pasting that and I'm adding a colon and then hover at the end of A and then I'm saying background and I wanna make it a different color than blue. 
And I'm going to identify that. This is a common thing I do. I'm going to inspect element. So right click and inspect element. And I'm actually going to make this blue right now in the browser. So if you have Chrome, they have a color picker. If you click that color, I'm actually going to grab a darker version of that blue right here. And I'm going to copy this hexadecimal value, Command C, and then I'm going to Command V it right in that background before the semicolon. And I'm going to Command S to save. And let's go back and see how this looks. So now it's a blue button, blue, blue, blue. And then when I cover, it goes to dark blue. It's a little purple, but you get the concept here. Um, there's an opportunity to make, you know, a, lo a lot of stuff happen with hover. Hover is a great, um, great selector and you should use it. Next, we're going to talk about how to make this into a respectable cover photo. Let's say, um, for now, just to prepare us for that, I'm going to go back to the index page and get rid of some of this stuff before the main div and take a look at what this looks like. So we've got this kind of cover image and then this nav and we'll clean this up and get it ready in the next video. Please join me. Thank you so much.